Hi, my name is Carla Dobby. I'm one of the CSA general executives, uh, and I do uh, jazz trombone, jazz performance um, at the con. And I'm going to talk about why should you bother with musicology as a performance student, or as a composer, or as a contemporary musician, or creative music uh, studier, uh, or you know any of the various degrees we have at the con. Why is it important for you? The purpose of musicology is the documentation of knowledge and also the spread of that documented knowledge. So at the con, we have four years. And in four years, we cannot teach everything. We cannot learn everything. It's gonna be a lifelong thing. The con is purely foundational. The con can't teach you everything. They also don't offer to teach you everything, right? So. Uh, for those who are interested in musical theater, sorry buds, there's nothing at the con, you know, and these sorts of, uh, I guess, uh, musical pathways just aren't available to us. How do we get this sort of knowledge that isn't offered to us uh, by the people around us? Um, actually, how do we get knowledge in general in a musical way? Um, so one is our own experiences, uh, just being thrown into the deep end and they say, play. Um, another way is through other people's experiences of those around you. So like friends showing you sweet licks they just learned or your teachers uh, showing you how to do shit. And that's awesome. But you have a limited field. You're limited by the people you know um, and the teachers you have. So how do you expand upon knowledge when you're stuck in the con, you're stuck in Sydney. I, stuck is a, is a negative word, huh? So how do you access more knowledge? And that's through the musicology realm. <laughs> that's through musicology. So doing your research um, and uh, not only like reading into other people's research, but maybe going about your own musical investigation with the mindset of a musicologist. So let's say you're going to do something that you don't have experience in. You're a third year composer, you're um, in love with doing musicals, you've played in a bunch, um, and you've conducted one before. So someone approaches you and they say, can you write for this new musical I'm making? Uh, it's sort of a jazz thing. Um, jazzy inspired musical theater show and I am paying some middle-sized bucks for it and you say wow what a treat sign me up so you're writing for a musical for the first time and you think I've got foundational knowledge because I'm a composer I've done orchestration at the con I've done jazz harmony and arranging I like um, the jazz genre thank you so this shouldn't be so hard and you say yes ma'am I will take it on um, but then you get down to it and you've got a lot of questions. So for instance, you can't figure out how to make transitions between song and speech or vice versa, not sound stupid. Um, you can't figure out how to make like the orchestra not overpower the vocals or confuse the vocalists who are perhaps amateur. So all of these different questions you have, but you don't have people around you, you can ask. You don't have teachers um, to teach you this stuff. Um, so how do you find it? You research, baby. So you go online and you look up like history of um, musical theater, um, arranging for musical theater. You come across a book called The Sound of Broadway. So you're doing a lot of reading and you're like, freaking sweet, I have a better idea about it. You go for it. The musical is a great success. Um, sounds good and now you have that under your belt and you keep improving. So that's like one example of how you can apply uh, musicology to your own life because clearly you have foundational skills but you're missing this sort of niche nicheness of uh, a, a genre you haven't done before and that's not offered around you and there's so many instances of that. Last semester I did jazz musicology and analysis and for that I uh, researched the use of jazz and uh, its relation to musical continuity in the early Super Mario games. I, I gained a lot of knowledge that I wasn't necessarily looking for because I, I was just trying to get as much as I can and looking at all of these resources um, so I could hopefully get some relevant ideas. Um, and I also transcribed a 
fuck ton uh, of Super Mario, uh, which was really great. Um, so I had this informing from like books and research, which is one aspect of musicology. But then I also did uh, the aspect of musicology, which is my own investigation. So looking at works that haven't yet been talked about in musicology, very surprising because Super Mario is really good. I learned how Koji Kondo thought and made decisions and how those were informed by limitations of the time, the, the historical context. So if I have a greater picture of like historical context and then also the context of the compos composer's work um, and having that in front of me, I can put together what the composer was going for, um, which was awesome. And so I wrote for video game music after I uh, did that research to try to apply my new knowledge and it actually sounded good. So musicology has a lot of potential to do that for you and not just if you're uh, a composer and arranger because two of my examples have been that. It will never hurt you if you have more knowledge. I think one other point um, that's pretty important to uh, talk about is that musicology is also not just classical history, uh, which, and not just jazz history. Yes, there is the most uh, amount of research in classical, but there's tons of research everywhere about everything, which is sick. Um, but I think something to not be underestimated or its importance understated is the political, social, um, and cultural context in which music appears. And that's important for people putting on concerts, um, uh, choosing repertoire for concerts, and playing in the concerts as well. If you know the social context in which music appears, or whatever context that music appears, then you, one, have a connection to um, the meaning of the piece, which is obvious if you're playing a, a piece, you want to know what it's about. But you also want to know who the target audience is, right? So say you're putting on um, a Latin concert, right? I, I love Latin. I'm putting on a Latin concert uh, and I'm doing it on samba, which is a genre I freaking love. There's two ways I can go about putting on this gig. So I'm standing in front of the audience and I say, so here's some freaking sick samba tunes, but more professionally than that. And I go, one, two, three, four, and then we start. Or I can say this song's called Prake Jiskutia Komadami, and it's the thank you. Yes, she she speaks Portuguese. Um, <laughs> um, so I introduce the song, I introduce the composer, and then I say this song's significance. Um, and it's significant because it's a tongue-in-cheek criticism of the upper class in Brazil because samba was a music deemed devil's music, was called sinful and was called utter garbage. It was upper class people sneering on samba. Yet, a few years later, uh, these people decide, hey, wait, actually, samba is a national treasure. Um, and it's a criticism um, of the people who went from this to like this in the space of a couple years. And so if I explain some of the social context that the music appears to it, uh, hello, um, that the music appears in, um, the audience has a connection, right? Um, the players have a connection to it. I'm not, you know, erasing like a key part of history that belongs to samba music and belongs to Brazilian people. Uh, and I am a, a privilege to be able to perform it. So the least I can do is know where it comes from. Um, the same can be said for any genre of music that you decide to perform. So with, I guess, older genres of music, by not knowing its history, you're erasing any connection to it and it becomes nothing more than a pretty right. song. So it's beneficial for everyone to have a connection because if you have a connection, you'll play it better. If the audience has a connection, they'll love it more. Um, if you're putting a, uh, a concert together, it's a beautiful message if it has some sort of 
uh, historical or social or political context pulling all of your pieces together. It makes a lot more sense. So I guess the point is information can't be bad. <laughs> it can only serve you in so many different ways. Um, and it'll do you some good to look into some musicology. So uh, I highly recommend it. Um, and look, we got all this time on our hands. We might as well, right? Nah. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, thanks for listening. That was quite a lot. Um, but you know what? I'm going to post some of my favorite musicology essays that I've read in the last bit down below. Okay. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hope exams are good. <laughs>